Hey everyone, it's uh, John Isaias from The Automator and Descalata here. We're, we're stepping through one of the examples he's done on web scraping with UIA, which is really amazing because you don't need external tools like no other drivers, no other thing else. It's built with basically every Windows computer, right? And if you stick around to the end, you're going to learn how to avoid some of the pitfalls of this approach because even though it's a cool, solid approach, there are some complexities that we want to make sure we outline and show you how to take care of those. That is true, actually. Um, and I would say definitely when I saw the code, this is one of those examples of, of code that is self-explanatory. Uh, and that, is, that makes it all the greater because you can give it to somebody that does not know much about our hotkey and they would definitely understand what is going on. And, and they can make minor tweaks very simply. Yes. Awesome. All right, let's get going. All right, so we're back with Escalada and Isaias uh, walking through using the UI automation functionality stuff. And what, what I was going to mention, Desclada, I don't know if you've seen the comments, but a lot of people chimed in and said you were like one of the nicest and most helpful people on the Auto Hockey Forum. So I don't know if you saw that. Um, everyone appreciates your work. In Thank you for the commenters. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's true, actually. And right now, I have learned so much just by going, you know, the way how you explain the things is very clear, actually. Is, 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 you know, you and I talk about this a lot and um, is, hey, when you're going to learn something new, find an expert that can kind of point you in the right direction and you save so much time. And that's why I thank you so much, Desclata, for jumping on here and helping, you know, walk us through it. Because what's great is, of course, we're recording this and everyone is going to watch it and be able to, to learn a lot from this. So it's, it's really helpful. No totally. problem. I learn a lot uh, from you too. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> it goes both ways. That's the point. Yeah. So um, in this case, one of the other examples that you actually wanted to show us was going through one of the examples that we have here. And we had two, let me see, hold on. We had here the Google Translate. And I, I wanted to go with one of these ones um, mm -hmm. because it, it, it contains a little bit more code. And it might be like a, a little bit more daunting for other people to understand because this little piece of code you might take a few minutes to understand it, but when you start to see like a lot of, uh, you know, code going around, you might not even want to try it. So I think it is a good kind of like an example of what is going on and why. I think that's the best part of it. I just want to know why. Now, and I think this is the first time we are approaching code, right? We yes. Haven't... No, yeah. we haven't actually talked about it before. Okay, so can we just run it real quick and see what happens? Exactly. So let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, yeah, fine. Because, of course, I have to uh, switch this to that should fix it. And uh, you I go back one. The HK. Perhaps. Right, yeah, because yeah. I removed the, the brackets. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It opens an incognito window. It goes here. Does it do anything? Yeah, let me see. Okay. It tried to go to a different window, but then it couldn't do it because of this. Right. Yeah. The exactly. lid. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Okay. So a lot happened, right? Yeah, yeah, no, but actually, I, I actually liked something in particular. The whole thing stopped until I clicked the leave page. And, and then it continued. And then it continued. Way. Yeah, that was interesting, actually. Okay. By so, the way, quick quick question. I'm sorry. Uh, do you speak Spanish? No. Oh, okay. Because this is <laughs> the Spanish <laughs> thing. That's how you say no in Spanish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but basically, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of like interested because I saw that you pasted the Spanish version of it to get an English translation. I was like, do you speak Spanish? What? I just thought it's more fun to get the English result, right? Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. Español. Yeah, but it, it, I would have expected you to speak. What is the language that you speak, actually? Your la native language? Estonian. Estonian, right? So uh, that was uh, yeah. my third language of choice. I was, I was yes. going to switch to that. Um, <laughs> I would have thought that you would get a, at least put some Estonian in there, and then just, <laughs> but actually you chose Spanish, and I was like, ah, hold on, what? <laughs> okay, so okay. let's go ahead and see what happened here. So, um, the pro, the main problem with browser automation is be, uh, is that you're trying, you're probably trying to target um, 
many different types of browsers and many different types of users, right? Yes. So some users, uh, for example, might have uh, the browser set into English or Spanish or German. Uh, and this makes all the UI interface uh, uh, buttons also change, right? The names will change. So we need to like find a way around it. And, and the first part of the go code is uh, supposed to do that. Oh, so this so, is making sure that you are in the correct language so that everything stays always the same. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, for some reason, the save button didn't work. Right. So it seems um, I need to change the example a little bit. So it might happen, yeah. Button in every case. Okay. It's it's going to the two by the way. So you, um, you you assume that this is the one that actually failed. Yes. Okay. Uh, so this I'm, is the I'm one that actually. Sure it's, it's the okay. one. Yeah. Okay. So okay. basically, what I'm looking at in here, let me let me ask you the first question that popped into my mind. I think I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. Is this particular option that you have here the force yeah. render accessibility? Uh, why do you have render, that option, and yeah, why? This, uh, why and you know? Um, there are like there are actually two flags, right? Uh, the first is the force uh, force render accessibility, which uh, just tells Chrome uh, to. Uh, to respond to screen viewers, uh, screen readers, uh, which uh, pretty much you are was built for, right? It, it's, it's built originally for blind people, so screen readers can read out aloud the text that is visible on the screen. So this this flag turns on the accessibility, so we can access all the elements. This just just in case, sure. yeah, yeah, it's just to make just sure. So basically, yeah. Um, just to kind of like drive, I think I mentioned that to you, Joe, yeah. the UIA library is built specifically for accessibility in the sense of, you know, blind yeah. people, deaf people, because when we, when I mentioned the word accessibility, you were confusing it with the ACC library. And I was saying like, yeah, the whole thing, all of those libraries, the ACC library and the UIA, they're both specifically for what he just mentioned. And I didn't know the word at the time, screen readers. They are supposed to crawl the screen and read it for blind people um, in an easy manner. So um, this, yeah. what you're saying, this Colada, is that this actually makes sure that that particular option is on by default. What happens if it is not on? What would happen if that is not, say, for example, that you didn't pass that and that I had accessibility disabled for some reason? Uh, if, if you had, uh, had it specifically disabled, Mm -hmm. Then uh, this code uh, will force it um, uh, force it on again, so it it would. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The flag, it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's what I mean. So imagine but, that I didn't have the flag, and I also had it disabled for some reason. Yeah, Does that it mean has that they specifically disabled because uh, by default? Yeah, they are all on. Right. Yeah, it's on. But let's say in the in the in the case that it was actually disabled by me, does that mean that the a, the UIA library would not be able to read the screen? Uh, probably. Okay, so we, so we're not really 100% sure. It's specifically disabled. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just obeys the rules. You know, well, now we all know how to screw with blind people. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what we can do. No, basically uh, uh, what happens is that, um, so in general, Again, as the scholar just mentioned, unless somebody disables it, right, ninety nine percent of the programs are going to be enabled with accessibility turned on by default. Yeah. It's not something that you have to worry about. But he's just doing this, uh, uh, you know, yeah, just to be sure, right? Yeah. So that is one of the things. So first of all, we run it, we activate it, we get and our. So just another note, um, and we run it in incognito mode because um, we want um, as few things as possible to interfere what we're, what we're trying to do. the extensions, so, okay, yes. Well, that, and that gets back to your point earlier of how it's all, you know, normally we're all in different languages, possibly whatever, but you're trying to control for that and limit the, the variation across systems. Right, yeah, so, exactly, so basically exactly. you also make sure that the extensions cannot make now, problems. Now, if you're, exactly. running, if you're building something for you to run on your computer and you're gonna be the one using it, you're fine. Matter, yeah. 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 Just to clarify. Yeah. 
Okay. Now we okay. did actually create a um, uh, a new browser uh, interface. In this case, we yes. waited for the new page to load, uh, yes. and you said this is a timeout, right? So this is a timeout of five seconds. Good. Yes. Now it, I wait, wait, wait. Is it up to five seconds? Up to five seconds. Yes. Okay. So, so it, if it, if it, if it loaded, it is not going to load the five yeah. seconds anyway, yeah. right? Thank you. Yeah. So it's either or. It, either it loaded or it waits for exactly. maximum five seconds. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we have the set URL, which is what we were talking about um, earlier, that we can set up the value on the URL, but then you pass the true parameter here to go ahead and navigate to it, Yeah. Exactly. which is actually interesting. Um, as you created the class yourself, what I would suggest is in general, having a navigate function, which is actually more common. Um, when we had the UI, uh, the IE uh, com objects and most of the com objects that we use have to do with browsers. They have this navigate uh, mm -hmm. function that you just pass it a URL and it navigates. Yeah, but Isaiah, then you're not using the library and you're just adding stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm making it <laughs> like you were telling me on the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 because this one is a library that he created. I know. So this, I'm yeah. <laughs> kind of joke of like, right. <laughs> In this case, it's, um, it's just more effective to combine these things because. As we know, we want to use as little find methods as possible. So we want to avoid trying to look for the URL bar twice, which we would need to do if we uh, also call the navigate function, right? So first we would need to set the URL, URL and okay. after that, we would- I actually, I actually- find I, it again. Uh, Right, well, what I and really meant- No, it's so basically great. what I meant, no, not really. So basically what I meant was like this, check this out, navigate and URL, and then it would just do this. So it would be this dot set your, so it would just call this function Oh yeah, yeah. with the true set to, so it would be like true. Um, so it's just an alias. It's not like you're creating a new okay. function. Okay. So okay. basically no, navigate, no. Now here on my example, I could just say, um, which again, what I meant my point on it was, um, my point on it is that this is way more common. Um, yeah. More people are used to just saying navigate to this URL than That's to cool. set the URL. The next <laughs> yeah, so, so basically <laughs> just by setting it like that, it allows you to just navigate direct, directly to that right. page. Without but Isaiah, going back to our last video, that is exactly the same scenario I was talking about, uh, having a default version that would actually go up, you know, go verify. What was the um, um, the location to um, standard? Right, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically it would that be like just have... Yeah, this is what I what you were talking about, and and this is the solution for it. Sometimes you you just need the simplest solution. You don't have to create a whole new function. You just grab the function and sugarcoat one that you already have to right. always call it like that. I love and, the term and, sugarcoat because I, I think it really does help you go. We're just making it a little easier. It's just, just a little easier. It's not make it go down <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then for new people who are used to the navigate function, they will not find it uh, difficult. Because for me, I I do not find I, I I do not think about any scenarios in which I just want to set the URL and not do anything else. Like I always want to go to that page. If I put a page on the address bar, it's because I want to go there. It's very rare the instance in which i i'm automating everything just put the url and don't go anywhere just put it there for what for, for, for being there you know but but in general that would be kind of like the same i'm just going to use the same function that you have the only thing is that yeah. instead of having to pass it here yeah you know um so, we wait for but, it but what what's the point of uh, navigating to the url is um to to switch the language to english so, uh -huh. yes. for example, if you had the Google Translate page in Spanish, yes. you would not find any of the buttons. Right, you none of these the buttons right here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You need to set the language to English first and then go to the, uh, the Google Translate page. Now, quick question, and this is something that uh, you, uh, so accessibility. When I go for these elements here, do they have automation IDs? 
because I see that that one has an automation ID. So probably instead of, so I ate, right. Now, uh, does that but mean that if I have, yes? Yeah. I will bet you money. Um, if I switch the language, you would change? Or what country you're in, it, it's probably gonna, those options that come up first, I doubt are random. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I get what you mean. Yes. So basically the, these options that I have here change between people, but um, would it be, for example, um, let me, let me, let me double check what I mean. So if I go to, can I go to a specific version of it? Like I T L no. So I wanted to verify if I could see the, Spanish version of it, but that's the reason why you went to to the preferences here. My question would be, just one second. So this is what you tried. I want Sangrado. Now let's go to translate. You can navigate to a page that has the 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 to and the from built right. into. Right. Right now, let me see something. This is what I meant. So even if it is in a different language, the automation ID didn't change. But yeah. as Joe is kind of like pointing out, these three buttons might not be there at all. Because notice that I had like French the last time and now I have Portuguese. Yeah. But notice that even if it says Portuguese here, this is a totally different language, the automation ID is still I-10. Yes. So it is referring to the that particular button. So probably one way of improving would be instead of using the names in a specific language, well, you would be just using the automation ID. Here's yeah. the thing I would also look at, I'd just be curious about is if we were to look at Fiddler, you know, are those actually, you know, they're just not displayed that, you know, sometimes you'll see the, the IDs, you know, the stuff isn't always displayed, but the form still has the value. Right, right. I understand what you mean, but um, I'm not really sure. Because I don't know with this accessible insight what we're actually seeing. You know, you know what well, I mean? We are used. We are seeing at the element when it was created. Now, in this case, that particular element was created for Portuguese, right? But when I had it in English, it was created for French. But that element, that 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 location in there, in this particular uh, um, example, has an ID, which was what I was looking sure. for, right? But um, but I I'm saying you have a. They're visible, right? Yeah. I'm just saying, I've done stuff with web browsing where something's not visible, but it's actually there. It got right. down, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're saying like, if I go ahead and do this, I, probably I in the know. form. Yeah, in the yeah. form, if you go ahead and expect it, you might see the button, even though you didn't actually, right. uh, even though it is not being shown and stuff like that. Right. So yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, we will check on that. Because I get your point that those IDs don't seem to change, right? Which I At least in this particular example. In others, it might actually change a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, right. you, you could add a check uh, whether the language is, uh, is um, uh, visible there and uh, and then select the language right, to optimize it. But, uh, mm -hmm. but here we can just uh, we can just check whether the English button exists. And, exactly. Uh, and I like this. I actually like this thing. You are waiting for the element, and after it finds out, it just goes ahead and click it That's right awesome. away. That's awesome. You 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 can put it in one line. Just wait for it and click on it. And and basically, this is what happens. And this is very good uh, example of why you always want to do that. As it it tried to find the save button, it didn't find it. Right. It tried to find the OK button, it didn't find it. But then it was waiting for the page to load, the translate. Yeah. As I had this little box that said like leave, the script kind of like stopped and it's just waiting for that page to exist. Once I hit leave and the page was actually updated, then the script continued working because it has been waiting for it, which is awesome. Well, because you put some really good troubleshooting type steps in there, right? Right. This, this was great. He didn't have to do anything. The script did everything right. by itself. It was just waiting for me to get there. If I didn't get there, the script was not going to do anything else. It was not going to try to click something that doesn't exist. So as soon as it actually found it, then when I had a click, set the Spanish, go ahead and clicked on it. And um, then you just 
added and text to it. Honestly, look at how simple the verbiage and great job, Desclada, on explaining what's going on. Because you can literally read this and know exactly what in the world's going on on the page. Right. For example, it's, in this yeah. case, some of these comments are totally unneeded. Right. Because, right this yeah. one here, I don't need that comment because I know that it is waiting for the element Spanish to exist. Yeah. And then it's going to click on it. Awesome. So this is a, this is a, a good example of code that is uh, easy to read. You know what? Uh, also, as I guess, is it's a great um, re, um, demonstration of why using objects and using so you have the dot notation, you know, object oriented programming where you can have right. a method that's very clear. Because if you were calling functions and stuff, it'd be much more and still wouldn't be terrible. But this but, makes but it again, so right? It makes it so simple. Um, now, when you're calling functions, for example, the only downside to it is that you cannot. Well, you can, but it would be a little bit more complex to what? act on different windows. But in here, yeah. we just named this window that. But yeah. I could have three windows open and perform different actions on each of them, and you will know which one you're referring to by the object that you're calling. So it looks awesome, and this is. A basic example of what a good, so, um, yeah. a, a good um, um, piece of code looks like. It is self um, uh, self uh, documented because I know that it's going to find the save button and click on it. Well, I don't need to say that. <laughs> you know, it is there. Um, and second of all, these steps of waiting for the next step instead of now, I, I am curious about the slips here. Why are you using slips in here instead of waiting for elements? Uh, so I think there. Um, I think I wanted to illustrate that you can do it without the wait element exist by name. Okay. Right? So you exactly. can just find first. Click on it and then wait for a wait a little bit for the box to show up and then mm -hmm. select the. So basically, I uh, could I could definitely just grab this and copy it here, and it just you know it it would do the same thing. So what you're uh, saying? Uh, it's it's actually not not totally certain uh, because um, uh, every click action you do. Um, makes the browser think for a little bit. So sometimes if you send the command uh, too soon, it will just ignore it. No, no, but 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 if I'm actually changing this to wait for the element to exist. So what you're saying is that even if it exists, yeah. I could sometimes not click on it. It exists, you send the click message, but the browser ignores the click because it's oh, still right. processing the previous click. All oh, right. Okay. So it's yeah. okay. So sometimes, so sometimes you put little sleeps here and there. Uh huh. That is interesting. Yes. Now I, that, at that point, I, that I let me let me see if this is at all similar because when I used to do web scraping, actually, I just thought we were talking about with IE. Um, I had some things where I would I would wait for the thing to exist to click it, but by checking to see if it existed, actually my script would break. So I had to write a special thing to say. First, wait to see if this is even a thing. Now, if it's a thing, see if you can actually click it. Like, you know, do it. But it was right, yeah. exactly. And and I would I would say like for example, the wait element exists by name, um, or no, you know what the 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 click the click function probably I would assume that it gets a let me see it gets the clickable. Does it get kind of like a clickable selection? Get clickable point. You see this. Mm -hmm. So basically, we could definitely put um, a little while. While it doesn't have a clickable point, just wait a little bit until a, a specific timeout. But it still might have the clickable point. So Oh, so even if it has a clickable point, you can actually send the click, and the browser is going to say, like, yeah, don't care about it. Yep, oh, exactly. So that's something that... If you do um, it too fast. Right. So that is something... You see, that's the reason why it's good to talk to somebody that right. knows about it because so, I would have tried to come up with that solution and I would have found out that, yeah, it's the same. <laughs> ah, that's interesting. So basically, um, one of the things then, what I would suggest then 
is that after clicking, you should always, like the function for click should have a, a built-in slip in there. As much as I hate it, I was right. going to... I would, I would actually go by can, that. Can you, can you can you check for something after it? To, and that, I just hate having a, a sleep that doesn't, you know... Right, exactly. It's a half a second. Yeah. It's, can we check for... Is is there, it, the the question is, is there a way for me to know that the browser is ready to accept a click? Right. Uh, so there might be a way. Uh, yeah. There is the um, window pattern um, property for wait for input idle, or sorry, the method in wait for input idle. Uh, okay. which will then um, uh, wait, which will tell the window to wait uh, to be ready for user input. Right. right? Okay. So, so that, that would be something that would be something that I would build into the click function yeah. just to make sure that you are in a clickable state before going ahead and trying to click it. But of course, it needs a timeout. It cannot just would be you, an infinite loop. Would yeah. you put that as a parameter that you can turn on and off or just have it on no matter what? I would have it no matter what, because I, I do not want to, I, I want to make sure that whenever I'm going to send a click, that the window is going to answer to that click. I don't want to send a click without, yeah. uh, you know, I don't want to send a click and that it's going to get ignored. I just so looked at, for instance, and maybe this is way off base, because like my background is in web scraping, right? But um, mm -hmm. a lot of it is. What I ended up doing was checking to see if there was an offset width or an offset height of the thing, because once that actually had that, then it was something that could be clipped. Right. Now, in, in the in the in the situation that I think the scholar and I are describing, it does that. So that function that you're referring to is general to any type of window. It's not only for browsers. Is that right? Uh, yes, it should be general. Exactly. Uh, so basically, but the thing is, I, I uh -huh. haven't I haven't tested that method yet properly. No, we haven't. So okay. So I'm a bit hesitant to add it here. No, no, of uh, course. But we're just actually just discussing a yeah. little bit of uh, as as uh, as a as a uh, one of the possible solutions to the problem of and sending a click and not being sure that the browser is going to answer it. And the reason uh, also why I would go about it is because. I do not know when I'm going to need a sleep. So I, I don't want to be testing, you know? So, so in this case, you figure it out, but here, up here, you're not using sleep at all. So up here is working fine. Down here, you have sleeps. How do I know when I need it? Well, if the click function already did that for me, it would be better because the click function is just going to make sure that it's going to send the click only when the other window is ready to accept click. That would be great. Um, the, the reason I didn't put in the built-in sleep uh, argument is that, uh, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm following the same uh, style as all the hotkeys. So the native click function also doesn't have a built-in sleep, right? No, exactly. So which yeah. button, click count, drop exactly. out, and relative, nothing else, yeah. But if I put it in the front, then if you wanted to do a left click with the key no, yeah, it, no, 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 so... Yeah. No, so those type of options you put it at the end. Yeah, no, those type of options you put at the end. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is. It is annoying, but yeah. But you, in this you case, you can create the wrapper function for yourself quite easily, like click and yeah. click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. No, but in general, I think this code is very interesting. I like um, 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 how easy it is to actually go ahead. And after you get used to some of the names, and most of the names are actually very, you know, like, uh, how do you say that? Like, very intuitive. Wait, LMX is my name. That's it. You, you, and, and it does exactly what you're telling it to do. It's just going to wait until the element exists. Uh-oh. All right, so unfortunately, Isaiah lost power uh, right there, but uh, I think we were pretty much done with that example. And uh, that that's a lot of really, really great job at, at writing something that's very clear. Those methods and everything are so clear and easy to understand. Um, you and I were just chatting a little bit of how part of the reason why it's so clear and it's so simple is because compared to doing stuff in the DOM, it is much simpler in what you can do, right? Yeah, so you can do almost anything uh like with the DOM, uh, but uh, but since you are limited only to the visual part of things and not the background, then you 
it's much easier to interact with the elements, right? And I hope this example uh, shows that uh, that there are many pitfalls with uh, browser automation uh, that uh, you need to usually combine the wait element exists and the find first. And uh, you might need to sleep after clicks, for example, because the browser is still loading after the previous click. Or, or you need to, need to, um, you need to um, uh, think what the other users might be using to uh, account for that, what languages they are using. So usually it's better to find uh, find the language um, non-specific ways, right? So automation ID is a great example. So in Google Translate, we could use that. Uh, to to sort out the buttons uh, instead of using the languages themselves. Well, again, I'd say it, it gets back to who you are and what you're planning yeah. to do. If you're going to run something on your computer, hey, then I'll it's stop. much much easier than yeah, this. right. <laughs> Which is, I think, eighty five percent of the time. You know, either maybe it's a little bit higher if we say either. Oh, good, he's back. Whether. The condition is I'm going to run it on my computer or other people that work in like a very, very similar environment, right? I think that covers a lot of what people do with web scraping in general. Um, in, in, that, in that case, you don't have to worry nearly as much about the language issues. Now, um, it's been a couple of weeks since Jean's joined us on his call. He's been on vacation, the, the slacker, but he's <laughs> of like, hey, does this stuff work in the other languages? Because he's building a program that he wants to automate and have in other languages, and it becomes much more problematic to try to write around that, which is to your point, Desclada, you're, you're controlling it by forcing it into a certain language for your automation, and mm -hmm. that kind of negates the least trying to force it. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> saw. But, um, but again, this is still, it's, it's real. yeah, what I want to go web scrape amazon.com with this approach no right however do i want to automate logging into amazon with this approach absolutely right it's great it would be easier yeah yeah um i'm sorry i had this power issue it has been like a christmas streak but i think <laughs> yeah it has been you know turning on and off yeah today yeah. has been a very fun day but um yeah i just got here and heard more or less what you were talking about and yeah we were just um, summarizing the the differences yeah. and why you know there's mainly with auto hotkey there's um you know you have chrome you have Rafidium, there's still selenium which i don't think anyone's really playing with much uh, and then there's the auto control extension for chrome mm -hmm. this one takes a whole different approach which i know as as we've talked about this some is it's leveraging the fact we already have UI automation built into our, you know, browsers in the first we place. Don't, we don't need anything additional. Yeah. Right? yeah. So if you don't have, and actually that's a lot, I remember I think of the first call you said, hey, if you don't have admin rights at your company and you can't install like the, the um, Selenium web drivers, right. right? This is this is a great solution, right? It really helps around it's that. Good. It, it is. is. In every computer. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. That is right. Um, I think uh, just as a quick question, this um, as you mentioned, this can get the eye accessible object as well. So if you are in a computer that is older, let's say Windows XP, you still have access to the ACC library with this library. So you can get the eye accessible from the points, right? So I think it still uses the UI library. Um, yeah, it still uses... It. Through oh. the UI library, it tries to access the ACC. I accessibly. Right? Oh, so right. you okay. still need, need the oh, UI. Right. Yeah. So it might happen that if there is a computer out there that does not have the UI library in yeah. it, but what I do it. think, what I do think is that this is part of the Windows updates. So probably if you have an older PC and it's updated, it might actually come with the library. Uh, one of the updates might have that library in it. I'm not really sure. I will check on it, but um, I do. I, I know that most what of the, the yeah. What is the earliest version of uh, Windows that supports this? I haven't actually checked. Right. I that's that's ex it. that's exactly my question. You know. Yeah. But I'm I would say sure. I would say NT XP is XP, probably sure. right. Yeah. Very yeah. very exactly. likely. Yeah. Again, this this library, even though it is kind of like we're looking at it as new for AutoHotKey, it's not really new. It has been out, out about for ten years. About 
But what I would throw in on top of that as AS is if you're truly working with a computer that old and programs that old, hey, there's a lot of other ways in AutoHotKey to control programs that are older, right? Like control right, yes. amazingly simple and very amazing what you can do with them um, on older programs. Uh, I know that's right. not 100% of what you're saying because I might mm -hmm. have an older OS, but I have newer programs, right? And that's where it gets a little... Um, no, I, I think many of those newer programs uh, actually require certain versions of Windows because it would need some right. some basic things, but yeah. Well, awesome. Thanks again, Desclata. This was really powerful. Very good talk. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.